This video is sponsored by DistroKid. A common misconception with those that are new to mixing is that the stock plugins that come with your DAW are not worth using. But I'm here to tell you that they are. That means that if you have access to a digital audio workstation, then you should have access to everything that you need to mix professional sounding vocals right now. You don't need to spend a crazy amount of money or really any money at all on third party plugins or hardware as I'm about to show you throughout the rest of this video. But at the end of the day, it's the ear and not the gear. You can have access to all of the fancy tools, but without understanding the fundamentals of mixing or what you're trying to do, it's all worthless. A professional that knows what they're doing can make a song sound amazing using stock plugins only, while an amateur that doesn't will struggle to make a song sound even remotely good, even with the best tools available. And to prove it, I'm gonna be breaking down a vocal chain that I put together that exclusively uses the stock plugins that come with my DAW Pro Tools and hopefully inspire you to do something similar in your own sessions. And make sure you stick around till the end of the video because afterwards we're going to shoot out the stock plugin vocal chain that I'm about to show you with one that uses premium third-party plugins that you have to pay for to see exactly how they compare to one another. But before we get to that, let's quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video, DistroKid. If you're an artist that puts out multiple music releases per year, you could save a lot of money and simplify your life by using DistroKid. Millions of artists, myself included, rely on DistroKid to get their music onto popular streaming platforms including Spotify, Apple Music, and more. They make getting your music onto stores a breeze with their simple interface and they pass on 100% of the earnings generated from your music directly to you. They even make splitting a song's earnings super easy with their splits feature. Great for sharing a song's revenue with featured artists, producers, and other collaborators. Other distributors make you pay every time you upload something or they keep a percentage of your earnings which ultimately ends up costing you more. With DistroKid, you pay a low annual subscription fee that lets you distribute unlimited music for the year, making it much more convenient and less expensive than the other guys. DistroKid also gives you access to helpful tools tools for content creation and marketing your release, including hyperfollow landing pages, the Vizzy Video Generator, and much more. A lot of artists I work with love using DistroKid, and I'm sure you will too. You can sign up today using my link down below to save 7% off your first year. Thank you DistroKid for sponsoring this video, and now, back to the content. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I rely on Pro Tools for my mixing and mastering, and I'm specifically a subscriber of the Pro Tools Studio subscription. It gives me access to a variety of additional plugins right out of the box, and many of these plugins are also available on the lower Pro Tools artist tier. However, some of them may not be, so please keep that in mind as you watch the rest of this video. But the reality is everything we're gonna be talking about is not even necessarily specific to Pro Tools or the tool that I'm using, but really just what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and the thought processes behind it. So even if you're not using Pro Tools, if you're using Ableton, Logic, or something else, you should be able to watch this video and benefit from it. But of course, the Pro Tools user will benefit the most because you'll be able to see exactly what I'm using from the Pro Tools collection of stock plugins. Now, the first plugin in the chain is a gate, and I'm specifically relying on the Dynamics 3 Expander gate. And the reason why I'm using this is to ultimately remove or reduce the presence of the quieter moments that are happening or the breaks that are happening. So a lot of these are actually breaths that the artist Sorry is taking when he's performing vocals, but some of them are also just some room noise and some clicking, maybe clicking from the headphones, some headphone bleed in between the vocal performance. Now, you can see I've already gone in and done a little bit of editing, right? I've gotten rid of some moments, and I could certainly go in and continue to delete these moments of silence if I want. But I also have some breaths that are taking place that I want to preserve, but maybe just reduce at times. And the reality is sometimes when we're mixing, we're a little bit lazy. We don't want to spend all this time manually editing everything, even though to be clear, it is usually the difference to achieve a great sounding mix. You should spend this time doing the manual effort. But depending on your timeline, if you're on a crunch, right, and you got to work through something quickly, you can rely on a gate to clean up a lot of these problems quickly and then manually edit the stuff that requires manual editing. So as I said in this example, we're relying on the gate to essentially clean up some of the stuff automatically for us to allow us to be a little bit lazier. But also what I like about this, as you're going to find out in a moment, is it's not totally killing the breaths. It might be reducing them a little bit at times, but overall it's keeping them there. And that allows this vocal to still sound natural because if you remove them, maybe it's going to start sounding a little bit robotic or less human. I do typically like to either keep my breaths in and maybe turn them down rather than remove them altogether, but that's a sidebar. So let's actually quickly see exactly how this sounds. How does this gate sound? How is it cleaning things up? And what is it ultimately doing? So I'll bypass, put it in, and let's see. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? 
tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. So just a little bit of housekeeping we're using the gate for. Now the next plugin in this chain is a deesser. And for that I'm relying on the Dynamics 3 deesser right here. Now everything is in the name. I'm using this deesser specifically to treat S's, to treat harsh sibilants, which is not just limited to S's, but also potentially CH's, maybe T's, maybe even G's, depending on how they're being said or sung or wrapped. And we're ultimately just using this to clamp down around 4.7K here by upwards of 5 dB. Let's play this and check it out. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me if I do it my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me if he talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus sun is covered like solar eclipse. Tell me if he talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus sun is covered like solar eclipse. So sometimes again, working a little bit harder than others, right? During this section here, there's a lot of S's and sibilant parts stacked back to back to back. You saw it sort of tipping and moving a lot quicker and a lot more frequently, whereas other times it was not necessarily doing that, but overall just relying on a de-esser early on in the chain to treat the problem of sibilance and harshness. Now third in the chain is a channel strip here, and I'm actually relying on a few different processes within this, but this is literally called the channel strip from Avid, and it's got a built-in EQ, filters, a dynamic section, and I can also manipulate the volume, although I haven't really done that here. However, I have used everything else. Let's first start with the EQ, because that's the first one in the chain. With the EQ, I'm doing a couple of moves here, just to enhance things a little bit. I know Sorry is not necessarily recording on the best mic or in the best situation. I believe he's recording on an Audio-Technica AT2020. So it does have a few problems. Even the room he's recording in also has some problems. However, I wanted to just enhance things a little bit. So I am adding a little bit of low end around 120, just adding a little bit more thickness to his voice. I am also removing a little bit at 244. And you can see those are pretty small moves. This is a 0 0.5 move this way, a 1 dB move that way, right? So this this second one is ultimately just curing some of the muddiness that might happen, especially as a result of that first boost. And then in the high end, I'm taking away a little bit around 5.9 kilohertz. I'm taking around 1.5 dB away and just a very focused cut as well. This is also going to help with some of that sibilance that's taking place. In terms of the filters, I'm not using the high cut at all, but I am using the low cut. I'm filtering out roughly 90 hertz, so that extreme low end with a 12 dB octave. So let's actually just get rid of the dynamics for a second and the volume. And I'm just going to play the filters in EQ. We could see the difference before and after. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me if I do it my way, is it going to happen? Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me if I do it my way, is it gonna happen? So it's it's subtle, not the biggest move. I didn't push anything too, too crazy, but you could just hear a slight tonal shift, especially as a result of that low end boost that I've put in here. So next we have the compressor that's built into this channel strip as well. And I'm ultimately using this just to create a little bit more consistency from the vocal. You can definitely see how there's a bunch of spikes just sort of happening at times, right? Where it gets really loud, it pokes out, and we ultimately want to just sort of bridge the gap between that and then the quieter moments that are happening because there are some moments there where he's a bit quieter and maybe things could get lost a little bit. So using the compressor here is going to definitely help create a better or more consistent sound that's easier to hear across listening devices. And the reality is I'm not doing anything too crazy here. It's pretty standard settings. Two to one ratio, slow attack, medium fast release. I actually have set up a softer sort of more slope knee, a little bit more of a natural smoother sound if that makes sense. And then the threshold I've got set up is done so to ultimately achieve somewhere around two or three dB of gain reduction. And I am adding some gain back to make up for that. So that means these louder peaks are gonna come down in volume, but then we're gonna be adding some volume back. So you don't notice that gap, but that increase in volume is ultimately going to benefit these quieter moments that are happening perhaps earlier on in the vocal performance. I'm gonna take it out, put it in a few times. Let's see the difference. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do it my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if he talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus sun is covered like solar eclipse. Tell me, if he talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus sun is covered like solar eclipse. Tell me, repeatedly, that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. So when the compressor's out, you can definitely hear how moments like this, for example, really stick out. A lot more noticeable than the parts before it. Whereas when I 
I've put the compressor in. Just makes everything a little bit more consistent or even in volume and not stand out so much. Now the plugin that follows this is actually a saturation plugin and that would be Lo-Fi. This is one of my favorite plugins. I've been using this for years. It's really a low key gem of a plugin, pretty simple to use. And I love using this in particular to add a little bit more distortion and saturation to a vocal. And what I find happens is that actually makes the vocal sound a bit more analog. It helps warm it up a little bit, helps it cut a bit more as well. Cause now we're ultimately gonna be producing some harmonics in the higher end of the vocal, which is just gonna help you kind of notice it more because the human ear is a bit more sensitive to higher frequencies than it is low ones. So I really just love using it for those reasons, adding a little bit of a textural quality, but also a little bit of a sound hack to make your vocal easier to perceive, especially on these smaller devices. But be warned, if you push this way too far, like any saturation, you're gonna end up with a heavily distorted augmented sound that might not necessarily be a good thing. It may not be appropriate. But that being said, I'm really just doing two things. Point one of saturation, point one of distortion, right? So I'm doing a slight bump on both of these settings. Everything else is left at the stock setting. I'm just adding a point one of each, and it's probably the most subtle amount you can add before you start to notice things. So let's actually play this and I'll show you what it sounds like. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do it my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if he talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus' sign is covered like solar eclipse. So it's pretty clear and also impressive. It always impresses me how this very tiny move can make a big difference. You can hear how there's just more body, more weight, more fullness to the vocal, a little bit more clarity in a way. It's definitely enhancing a few problems that we're gonna talk about in a moment, but overall relying on a nice saturation like low fi here could be the ticket to achieving a more impactful vocal sound. But that being said, we do have some problems that we want to address. And that leads me to the next plugin we're using, which is a multi-band compressor. And I'm specifically using the Pro Multi-Band Dynamics here. And I have three bands set up that I'm actually using. One focused on the low end and then two focused on the mid highs and the high band. This middle band here is not being used at all. It's in bypass. So keep that in mind. But I'm ultimately using this to just control certain frequency pockets more and to get the vocal to sit perfectly in the right place. There's definitely some issues that have come up as a result of the past two processes. So as an example with the channel strip, we boosted some low end, which felt necessary to me to add some more weight and body. And then we enhanced it even more with the saturation, which again, increased that low end in particular, as well as the high end here. But now I do feel like we're getting just a little bit too much low end. That's now producing somewhat of a muddy sound on the vocal that I think should be controlled just a little bit more. So for that reason, let's first focus on the low band here. I'm going to bypass the top two, but this low band is really just controlling that low end and making sure it doesn't get too pronounced or too muddy. You can see I've got some pretty aggressive settings here with a very fast attack and release. So it's taming it down quickly, letting it go real quick. And I am adding a little bit of makeup gain here, 0.5 dB with a depth or a range of 3 dB. You're gonna again see that we're losing volume sometimes, but we are also adding that volume back to make up for it. And overall, it is gonna be creating a much cleaner, more high-end sound as a result of taming this frequency area. Let me play it and check it out. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do it my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if he talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus' sign is covered like solar eclipse. Tell me, repeatedly, that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. And just in case I didn't say it before, we're focused on 300 hertz and below here, just cleaning this up. You can hear how it's subtle enough where it's not totally killing the low end, but it is cleaning it up and producing a more high-end sound that's just more controlled and not too overwhelming. So now let's shift gears and talk about the next band, which is focused on one to 4K. And I'm specifically using this to ensure that the vocal has a nice frequency pocket. This is really one of the most dominant ranges of the vocal and typically the one that we hear best, humans hear best or easiest. So I really wanna make sure that the vocal sits well in this area. But I also know that this area can be very spiky and pronounced. It can create a honky type of sound or just a really resonant type of sound if you're not careful. So I'm using something called upward compression here. So what this is really good at is almost like an EQ boost, right? It's almost like adding 2 dB to this range, but whenever this range becomes too overwhelming, it then reduces it down from this added state. This is much better than static EQ because static EQ, you're just perpetually adding something. And unless you're automating it, you could create a lot of problems at the same time because maybe that boost is good here, but then not good at other times. This will be able to dynamically see what actually is happening. And whenever something is a problem, when it passes the threshold, not necessarily add that volume back. All the other settings are pretty standard with a medium quick attack, medium quick release as well. So let's actually see how this is. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? 
Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do what my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if you talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus and his covered like solar eclipse? Tell me, repeatedly, that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. So yet another subtle move, but you can just hear how we're managing the mid-range pretty effectively with this upward compression. And if you want to see another video I did all about upward compression, click the card you see on screen right now. But let's actually talk about the final band here, which is focused on the upper range from 4K and above. And this is another downward compressor. But what I'm ultimately doing is I'm trying to enhance the high end, almost again, like an EQ boost, but without actually using a static EQ, because I do find that sometimes when you enhance this area, some of those harsh frequencies that we treated earlier with a de -esser for example, and the other EQ, they might poke their head out and be really harsh on the ears. This way allows us to manage it dynamically, to enhance it when we need it to be enhanced, but then also control it and prevent it from being too overwhelming when it is. So in this case, I do still have a negative range here. So it is traditional compression, but I am adding quite a bit of gain back. So I have a 2 dB range, so I can lose as much as 2 dB, but then I'm adding back 2 dB at the same time. And what that's ultimately doing is again, just creating a more consistent sound in the higher end of the vocal. Fast attack, fast release, pretty aggressive with my settings here. So let's see and evaluate how this is affecting the vocal sound. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do what my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if you talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus and his covered like solar eclipse? Tell me, repeatedly, that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. So you can actually hear the air and the high end shine being applied to this, and it actually makes a pretty significant difference. But again, we're controlling it in such a way that it's not gonna be too problematic. There's definitely problems coming up that we're about to talk about, but you can hear how it's just enhancing things. And that's what I'm after here. But like I said, we do have some problems that have now come up a little bit more as a result of this last process. So that means the next plugin in the chain is another de -esser. And once again, I'm relying on that same de -esser from before, the Dynamic 3 de here, just to help quell some of that higher end stuff, especially the sibilance, the harshness, right? That's poking its head out now that we've done that multi-band compression and created a more consistent sound. This is not unusual, by the way. Some people get really worked up about how I've used one process earlier. Why am I using it again later. Why are you doing this? And how things seem counterintuitive. This is just how mixing is. You solve problems. Sometimes you create new problems as a result of solving previous problems. And you just sort of treat them throughout the chain as you see fit. At least that's how I've done it for years. And perhaps there is a better way. The good news is you could do it in your own sessions. I'm just showing you how I do it in mine, right? We're changing things up a little bit. We're focused a little bit higher up in the frequency spectrum this time. And we have a smaller range. We're not going as crazy as our first one. If we look at our first one, we're focused on 4.7 with a minus 5 dB range. This one is focused on 8.1K and we have about a 2 dB range. So obviously a much gentler reduction taking place. So let's actually see what this is doing. I'll bypass and put it in. Uh, tell me if I run away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do what my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if you talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus and his covered like solar eclipse? Tell me, repeatedly, that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. So even though it's gentle, you can hear how there is a tonal difference as a result of using the de -esser. It's why sometimes I'm iffy on de and I'm very careful when I use them, but this one seems to be quelling that problem a little bit better than before, and I think that's okay. So the final plugin I have on this particular plugin chain is a limiter, and I'm specifically using the Pro Limiter. Now my goal here, I'm really just trying to drive up the volume of the vocal in a controllable way and ensure that it's just consistent. That's really what a limiter is here for. Just like a compressor, a limiter is a more extreme version of compression, essentially. So what I'm doing is I'm leveling things out and I'm able to just get it to sit a little bit better. And that makes a lot of sense to me, especially as I know that the beat that we're working with is also limited. So if you have a very dynamic vocal and a beat that's limited and squashed, usually the two are not going to sit well with each other. It's usually hard to get the vocal to sit well. And I've talked about this in some of my past videos, which I'll also link to up above and in the description below. I'm not going crazy here. I'm not trying to get the vocal to be super squashed or slam where I'm losing 10 dB of all. Volume. But on those really loud, excessive peaks, like the ones you see here, you're going to see this thing probably working a little bit more than, say, the earlier parts where it's a much quieter section. But that being said, let's check this out and see how much of a difference it makes. Uh, tell me if I run away, will you keep coming back? 
Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do what my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if you talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus' sun is covered like solar eclipse. Tell me, repeatedly, that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. Right, you can hear how much more consistent, bigger, fuller it sounds. It's obviously louder, that's a thing. But if you actually pay attention to our gain reduction and stuff, we're only losing about one and a half dB at most at times. So we're not going to too crazy here we're just limiting the vocal controlling it a little bit more and ultimately arriving at the chain that you see here let's actually talk about effects because i have a couple of effects tracks that i've put on here and effects are essential to enhancing your sound and getting things to just feel a little bit cooler a little bit more vibey you probably want some reverb some delay and so on so let's talk about that now in this session i've got three different effects tracks the first one being a plate reverb and for that i'm relying on the standard d verb here i got the plate setting large setting very long decay, some pre-delay, and a little bit of filtering going on. But other than that, this is a pretty standard setting. In fact, I started with a preset vocal plate and just adjusted things a little bit more to my liking. Now, I followed this up with a stereo spreader here from Air, and I am just pushing the width a little bit here by about 135, pushing it a little bit more stereo. Reverb is typically already very stereo and more in the stereo field than the center, but I'm using this just to exaggerate that a little bit more. And to close out the chain, I have the EQ7 band here. You're going to see this come up a few times, but I'm really just using this to do some slight filtering in the lows and the highs, cleaning up some of the low end muddiness that happens with reverb in particular that could be overemphasized and also adding a little bit of a higher end shine to it with a slight boost. So let's actually see what this reverb sounds like. Here we go. Uh, tell me if I run away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do what my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if you talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus' sun is covered like solar eclipse. So it's a very elongated reverb. I like that. I think it's very ambient. And I think it makes sense for the track. You're definitely going to notice when I put it into context, especially that it's subtle. It's not too crazy, but it's appropriate. That's more of the uh, thing that I'm going for here. Now, the next effect is a delay, and I'm specifically relying on a short delay in the case of this song, and that's going to be Mod Delay 3. And the truth is, this is extremely subtle on this track. A lot of other tracks, I'm very blatant with the delays. I'm creating repeats on purpose, and you could absolutely use this plugin to do the same thing, where it's a echo repeat when you have a gap. In the case of this track, there's a lot of quick rapping and stuff. I didn't really feel like there was a lot of room to do that, so I decided not to. However, I did want to add a little bit of a delay effect to make sure that the track doesn't sound bone dry or flat. And this really almost sounds more like a slap in a weird way than it does like a short delay. That being said, I am using like an eighth note type of delay pattern here. And again, it's really, really subtle. So I'll mute the plate and we could check this out and just keep in mind that it's not just the delay, but I am following it up with some slight EQing via the EQ7. So let's check this out. Here we go. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do what my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if you talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus' sun is covered like solar eclipse. Tell me, repeatedly, that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. It's like very easy to miss. And when I mute it, like even I barely notice it. But again, it's almost like a slap so close to the original vocal that it's just like adding a little bit of this almost stereo kind of effect to it, which I, I like. So the third effect here is a vocal spreader. And I'm relying on a few plugins for this, but the intention here is to essentially widen the vocal a little bit so I could have my main vocal still in the center, but then a little bit more of a stereo effect that spreads it and makes it a bit more interesting across listening devices. So for that, I'm relying on the Mod Delay 3, and I'm actually using a preset that I've tweaked a little bit, but that's slapback delay with chorus. And again, this is just adding that sort of slapback effect, very similar to the delay that I just showed you, but a little bit more particular in terms of timing. Now, I am following following this up with another air plug and they all look like this but this is the flanger in particular and similar to the other setting I just used I used a preset wider stereo that I've then manipulated a little bit more in terms of the feedback the mix and so on blended at 50% then I'm using the air stereo width plug-in and in this case I just pushed the width to 200% really crazy I really do want this to be very wide feeling that's the goal or intention of this chain in the first place this particular effect chain and then I'm wrapping this up with yet another EQ seven band, just cleaning out the lows to prevent any muddiness around 130 hertz. So let me mute everything and just hear this one. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? 
tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at? Overall, the three of these combined really can help enhance the vocal from where it is. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do what my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if he talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus and his covered like solar eclipse? Tell me, repeatedly, that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. So let's actually play this track in context now. We could see where we started and where we ended. And then when I'm done, I will compare this to a premium vocal chain that uses third-party plugins, as I mentioned. Uh, tell me if I run away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me if I do it my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me if he talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus and his covered like solar eclipse. Tell me repeatedly that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. Now, even though it's all stock plugins, I think this sounds very professional and polished. Maybe it could use a little bit more work, but it's pretty damn close. And I would have no issue mixing a song with these plugins to ultimately achieve my final product before release. But let's now do what we set out to at the beginning of this video, which is compare this to a premium plugin chain. I'm not going to break that chain down, but what I'll do is I'll leave it on screen so you see what I used and ultimately use your own discretion to decide which one sounds better. Or realistically, the question should be, does the stock plugin chain sound just as good and just as professional? as the third party chain. I'll leave that with you. Let's check this out. Uh, tell me if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do it my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if he talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus and his covered like solar eclipse? Tell me, repeatedly, that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. Uh, tell me, if I ran away, will you keep coming back? Tell me that my past was to prepare me where I'm at. Tell me, is there plans for me more than I imagine? Tell me, if I do it my way, is it gonna happen? Tell me, if he talking wrong, can I bring out the fist? Blocking out Jesus and his covered like solar eclipse? Tell me, repeatedly, that my life's not a waste. Come and tell me that to my face. While they aren't exactly the same, you can definitely hear how both results sound professional, and that is my point. You don't need premium plugins to sound great. You can sound equally as great by simply just using the stock plugins that come with your DAW. Not to mention that there's tons of amazing sounding free plugins out there from third party companies. I'm talking about stuff like TDR Nova from Tokyo Dawn Labs or any of the analog style processors from Analog Obsession. The crazy part is I actually prefer to use some of these tools over plugins that I've paid top dollar for. Luckily for you, I built a vocal chain that exclusively uses these free plugins, which I break down in this video right here. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see some more mixing and mastering tips in the near future. I appreciate y'all for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace. Five.